on girls. So this little ray of sunshine wandering towards me is getting very, very close to leaving for her new home, which was a really, really tricky decision this time because I really would have quite liked it for myself for the future, but circumstances haven't really allowed. Um, as you can see, she's uber friendly and uber confident, leaving mummy and nanny horse behind to come and join us, or come and join me. Good girl, Annie, come on. Um, I'm going to document the process of weaning her. Um, as you can see here in the field now, she's with her mum, who is the one without the fly rug on, uh, Rosie, and she's with my horse, Cassie, as well. Cassie's been put into the field as uh, entertainment. Um, it keeps the fall out of trouble a little bit having a second uh, mummy in the field. Um, and as you may have seen on my Instagram feed, I have had to extensively bandage my horse's beautiful tail because Cheeky Chops here um, likes to have a chew on it in her spare time. Come on, honey. How is it with you two big sensible things, the first one over is this tiny little dot who in reality is not that tiny, actually considering she is a five month old foal, um, she's rather large. Good morning little lady, good morning, hi there, um, oh, my phone's so cloudy this morning. So as part of the weedy, <laughs> yes she stalks me, I can't get further away. So I'll turn it around so you can see the horse and not me. Um, hey Annie. As part of the weaning process, we put the nanny mare, who you can probably see approaching now in the background, in the field with mare and foal. Um, and Annie, has, Annie the foal has bonded really nicely with Cassie, her nanny mare. And actually now when I take Cassie out to ride her, you have a little neigh for your second mummy, don't you? Hey. Um, but this is all to make weaning an easier process. We don't do any snatching the mare from the field the night before and sticking the foal in a trailer. Um, we do a two week process. Um, the two barriers that you're up against are separation anxiety of the mare and separation anxiety of the foal. Um, and alongside that is the, hello, is the physical element for the mare of her milk still coming in because the foal even though she's not feeding a great deal thank you cheeky um is still taking milk off her mum and therefore rosie's still producing so for those early days of weaning so that is her nanny neighing to her not her mum come on cassie i'm only trying to catch my horse to ride um so as the milk still continues to come in for Rosie, the mummy, she will feel a bit uncomfortable. So we milk her for a few days and just slowly reduce her milk production. Um, this one now is not reliant on mummy's milk. She comfort feeds occasionally, but as I said, she spends more time with her surrogate mum, her nanny mum, than she does with her real mum. And as you can see, she is very comfortable with being a long way from her mother very comfortable in human company. We don't overhandle them, but they are head collar trained at this age. Um, they lead, but we don't sort of actively train that. We lead to and from the field where we need to. Um, we trim their feet from the very, very beginning. So they get very used to having the legs handled from the very beginning. Um, so she's humanized, as you can see, fully humanized. Um, and she is, comfortable with the company of other horses. So over the next two weeks, I'm going to talk you through the weaning process and how we do that day by day. As I said before, we tend to allow a fortnight to wean before she goes to her fabulous new home where she will be joining her two-year-old full brother, uh, which we are thrilled about because the lady who bought him is doing an amazing job with him so far and really raises uh, young horses in the same way we do. And that's so reassuring to know um, because Everyone that's bred here is very special to us. This one is Horden Annapurna. That's her official name. Annapurna is a mountain range. And as you can see here, we have a little snow-tipped shoulder. She's barely a coloured. She's got this little 
I suppose it's a mountain shape fittingly and then this little snow capped bit here on her shoulder look at the colour of her she's so lovely and dark right I am now going to oh hello hello from the back I'm now going to go and get her mother and go for it no no I'm not I'm going to go get her nanny and go for a ride on her uh, and leave her in the field with her mum to get bored for a while I'll keep you updated so day one of weaning has commenced we brought in the mare and foal uh, we walked them both into the smaller stable with a weave bar and then walked the mare out as you can see mare perfectly happy in her regular stable foal so chilled we've not even had to fully put in her weave bar you've grown whilst i've been on holiday little lady so by keeping mum close to baby and also close to her nanny mare she can see everyone from where she is she's not frightened or worried at night she'll go back in with mum overnight in the field um, but this just makes it a really gentle gradual weaning process none of this sticking the foal in the trailer and snatching her away over this period of time good girl we um, relieve the pressure for Rosie on her teats by releasing a little bit of milk down just to soothe her there good girl we don't do this too much because obviously the idea is we're reducing the milk flow but you can see she has bagged up so we don't want the mare to be uncomfortable because that'll add to her stress levels and actually i think it's the discomfort more than the missing the foal that's the problem and obviously you don't want any infections starting so over the next few days as we reduce the time the foal has access to feeding we will periodically just relieve the pressure on her teats as you can see for her this is a relief with the foal now she does kick her away a little bit because now she has teeth and she's big and rough she hurts mum a little bit but we're really gentle so we can just take off a little bit of milk leave the mare feeling more comfortable and not missing her baby so much uh, but she's definitely quite full bless her she's having a little spray now which will just release her and obviously we will milk her a lot less than the foal will feed um hey big girl but you can see she's totally relaxed she's not worried she's not stressed she's just just standing calmly surrounded by her baby and her best friend so by doing things really step by step and gently you, there's just never any need for separation anxiety um or you can massively reduce the level of separation anxiety foal grazes all day anyway now and she's got access to hay and water and the security of everyone around her so that is um step two i suppose of weaning after introducing a friendly nanny mare to the crew tail still bandaged to avoid it being eaten by this cheeky little lady. day three of weaning and she's been apart from her foal now for about three hours and has bagged up again, so we just relieve a bit of pressure, but nowhere near what the foal would take off, but anything to make her a little bit more comfortable without encouraging too much additional milk flow. And we've got mm -hmm. a bit of udder cream going on there. Is that cold? Um, just as a cooling, a bit like they advise breastfeeding women to freeze cabbage leaves and then put them on their boobs between feeding. That'll just hopefully make it all a bit more cool and comfortable. Whoa, I'm getting actually sprayed with milk here oh, dear. yeah good girl and this one equal shirt it's interesting she's got oh i've just sprayed it down my leg again she's got less in one side than she has in the other somebody must have fed from here this morning but by keeping her comfortable she gets less stressed about the whole process because half of her stress isn't the foal leaving her it's the discomfort that she experiences with very full boobies teats as they are known in the horse world oh my god on that side good girl try and do it a bit even oh there we go good girl and as you can see she is very relaxed during that process yes we're round about Day three of weaning, as you can see. There's little Annie, my foal, not too clingy to mum. And there's Nanny Mare in the rug, Cassie. So I'm going to bring them in again today. So today will be another in in separate stables and then out together at night. And then the next step we'll be taking, come on girls, 
is to switch it up so she's separated for longer. So we will keep them, um, the three of them in overnight instead. Uh, so they'll be in their stables, but separated. So at the moment she's doing about eight hours in a separate stable to mummy during the day, but she can see mummy. And quite soon now we will switch them. So she, <laughs> what do you do little lady? So we'll switch them so she'll do sort of 12, 13 hours overnight, separate to mum, uh, and then back out in the field with her in the morning. So again, everything we do is just slowly slowing down Rosie's milk flow and slowly introducing Annie to independence. I want to say slowly, we're doing this all over about 10 days, so it's not that slow on the scheme of things. Um, but it's like i've said before we're not doing a snatch and go approach hi gorgeous girls hey honey good morning big baby It's not a traumatic experience. I can do that loose in the field. Um, we don't do huge amounts of leading with them, mainly because often it'll be only one of us handling three horses. So we lead the adults or lead one, tend to lead the dominant mare, and everybody else follows. So I'm going to do exactly that this morning. So I'm going to put a rope around Cassie's neck. She will bring herself in. Okay. Oh, I have a helper on hand, so I don't need to do this anymore. Good girl. And leave them all in. Already after two days worked out that this is where she so goes. Day three times change it up, they're gonna come in overnight so that the foal is away from mummy for longer. Yeah. Linda, look at this. Isla's just put her head collar on. So um, the third step in our process is Annie will now do a night in a stable on her own. So she's still got mum right here, nanny mare right there, but she's on her own for the night. She's got hay, she's got water, she's nothing to worry about. Um, and probably around about nine or 10 o'clock, someone will pop out and just milk Rosie a little bit so that she's not too uncomfortable. Usually when they are bagged up, it's more comfortable for them to be moving. So it would be ideally better for her to be out at night. But for the safety of the foal, um, overnight, we like to know where they are. And we have the option to have them stable, so we will. Um, but we're very close to her being able to go out and the foal stay in with Cassie. So that is our day three plan of action. So it's day four or five, I can't actually remember. But we um, separated them overnight last night. Good morning, girls. So, morning, cats. Hi, Annie. How was your first night not able to feed from Mama? She looks pretty chilled. There's my gorgeous girl who, at the moment, she sees me wheeze. I don't know why I create that effect. And big Mama, who wants a chin scratch. This is what she does. Who, out of all of them, will be the most uncomfortable. So the first thing I'm going to do is milk her a little bit to take some pressure off and then we'll get them out in the field um, where they'll be together for the day again. And this has gone so well, I've got a funny feeling we might fully separate them tonight, whereby Cassie 
and Annie the foal will be in and Rosie can spend the night in the field with some of her other friends. More comfortable for her, I know. More comfortable for her because she can walk around, um, which relieves some of the pressure on her teats and causes them to naturally drip a little bit more. But the supply will be drying up now. Let's have a little look. I forgot to mention this. Before I lead her to the field, I knew the likelihood is the foal will want to feed immediately. So I've just let her from her stable back in with mummy to have a bit of a slurp. Um, so that as I lead her to the field, she's not cross. Rose, what's going on with you? Here you go. Um, because if I was trying to lead them to the field and the foal was trying to feed, that would be difficult. But you can see by Rosie's face, she finds the foal feeding. It's therapeutic for her, but it's also slightly more uncomfortable to tell by her ears. Because now she has teeth and she also has a very, very strong suck. But that's quite cute. So yeah, once she's had a little suckle, we'll head to the field. So now we've had some milky breakfast. I can take everybody to the field. Fall is nice and relaxed. And obviously just walks with her mum and her nanny mare. Old Cass. Um, I'm very confident that when we walk out without Rosie, she'll walk either loose nicely with Cassie or, as you know, she's nicely had colour trained so we can just walk on ahead. Now she's getting bolder and she's wandered a bit back there. So that's fantastic really. I've just turned them out, absolutely no drama and she's had 16 hours away from her mum but there's still no stress or fussing. So, oh this is great. Her teeth today now I'll show you are feeling loads softer so they're not filling up as much so this bit here was really really hard and probably will be again tomorrow morning but that's lovely and soft still milk coming so I'm just gonna have a little pull that tells me that the foal has probably actually fed recently which is the perfect time for me now to take the mare away so foal's probably got a full tummy mummy's feeling empty and probably a bit more comfortable so i'm going to put the grill in the door so we don't have any amateur dramatics from the foal she's got hay hay water a comfy bed and she's got her buddy just across the road from her there so the reality is she has nothing to feel worried so little foley's nothing to worry about i've put the weave grill in so she's secure and safe i am expecting some laying and even though rosie's about to go out with some of her other buddies she might pace this is the night she might pace um but we feel they're ready last night was a pretty calm process so let's see how we go come on then big mama Say bye bye to your baby. So baby's having a little whinny. I'm going to turn the light off. Everything's a bit calmer with the light off and we're going to take Rosie to the field. She's going in with two others who she knows well. Um, at the moment she seems utterly unfazed by leaving her baby but as it starts to make get a bit more vocal she's bound to be concerned. Come on darling, walk on. Oh, come Rose. Oh, she says no. Come on, darling. What a good girl. So yeah, I'm just going to lead her to the field. We are anticipating she'll walk the line for a while. Um, as much as we do everything in our power to make it a stress-free process, we are separating mother and baby. Um, and even I felt a little bit sad the first time I left my baby. And I am the least maternal mum around. <laughs> there we go. So a little bit of shouting, which we expect. Um, but her, girl <laughs> her girlfriends are shouting her up there now. So in we go to the big field. So here we are at the field. Oh, apparently the gate doesn't open that way anymore. Come, Rose. Good girl. Walk on. Come. Here come. Back, back, everyone else. Oh, aren't they just beautiful? That was her surrogate baby from last year. Hello! 
<laughs> right, I'll just turn off whilst I get her into the field. I do. Oh, they're very interested. She's more interested in the new mats. Off they go. Right now, she has entirely forgotten that she's a mother. Far too busy re-establishing herself in the herd. And actually, I can't even hear the baby shouting. This is a great start. So we're leaving the electric off just in case we have any um, attempts at jumping. I don't think we will. So the mare is now having a little run in the field. So we are going to shut all the doors on the inside barn to muffle the sound a little bit. Baby's having a little whinny. She's got her weave grills in, so she can't attempt any Houdini moves, but she's got a very relaxed friend with her. So she should just settle in time. Hopefully that's the plan. Good morning. It is the morning after the night before, as they say. Um, and by that I mean it's the first night that Rosie has been away from her foal. So um, she spent the night in the field up here. I have just rolled out of bed and I'm just coming to check on her. Um, I have amazing ears um, for all my sins because I hear everything and last night I did hear her about half past four having a little bit of a neigh and that will be when her milk has really, <laughs> I don't know my darling, when her milk has really come through. So Foley stayed behind locked doors last night to keep the volume of her a little lower. Good morning. Last night actually would have been easier for the foal than for the mare. Hi, gorgeous baby girl. Uh, nanny mare. Uh, doing her usual morning wee. When, she loves to wee when I arrive. Um, Jess is very cross that she's choosing to wee up the wall. So I'll just feed these guys first and then I'll go and do Rosie. Yeah, so she's really, really full this morning as you'd expect so by milking her now I take away the more physical side of her distress obviously she's pining a little bit for a fall it's perfectly natural but on the whole when we turned her out last night and her bag was empty she was actually quite settled um good girl I've got the feed here so that she's a bit distracted good girl because if the foal starts shouting in the stable, she might become a little bit more agitated. Oh, Rosie. We're really lucky that she's an incredible mare to handle. Um, and as you can see, he's quite happy for me to milk her. Good girl. I'm actually doing both teats from one side. For some reason, she's more comfortable with me on this side. So I'm just trying to release that as quick as I can without spraying it all over my crocs. Good girl. So this is the first attempt at taking the foal to the field without mum. Coco, come. Coco, come. Good girl. Okay, got the gate. Head collar off. Head collar off now. Head collar off the foal. Head collar off the nanny mare. Human safe. Oh, she tried to feed. Tried to <laughs> <laughs> she went straight to look for teats. <laughs> Love a job. So this will be interesting. <laughs> Is Cassie going to be more dramatic than Annie? <laughs> You're leaving the electric off again. Yes, I will do. Bless her. <laughs> yeah. A little bit confusing when your nanny mare can't supply you with breakfast. So this is the first time the foal will really 
start to wonder where her milk supply is. She's not going to get any out of Cassie, but she's going to have a try. So the girls, well, the girl, should I say, has been separated from mum now for, um, this is the second full day. So these two are gonna be going out in the field for a while together and we'll be bringing mum in. So we've just, because of the setup of our horse living um, environment, we are keeping mare and foal now separate by using one in during the day, one in at night. We keep the mare out at night. We'd rather keep the foal in at night um, because that way when she's in the field during the day, I can always be loosely an eye on her in case she decides to do any sillies. But in all honesty, the way she's behaved so far, it's been such a calm and lovely process for her. I really don't think we're going to experience any sillies. Uh, plus she has her lovely nanny mare to keep her company. So because mum has just come into the stable, Annie has got a little bit overexcited. There's lots going on, lots of newbies, but actually, she seems more interested in her neighbour than she does her mum, which is reassuring. You're okay, aren't you? You're okay, little man. You're okay. Good girl. Um, mum is tucking into a hay. Let's have a look at that bag today. See how that's coming on. Loads better. So this time yesterday, this was so hard because she was so full after being away from the fall for 24 hours. But today it's soft. I am going to take a bit of milk off as I usually do. But the fact that this is softer is really evident in her behaviour today. So overnight she did shout. Oh, thank you. She's just squealing at the horse now, not at me. Um, she did squeal a bit overnight and when I milked her yesterday, she was agitated um, and for an incredibly manly, manly mare who normally is just an absolute dream to handle, she was a little bit more reactive and we had to tie her up to milk her. I mean, that says a lot, most horses would have to be tied up as standard, but Rosie notoriously is amazing to handle. So today, the fact she's come in, she's letting me just relieve her a little bit there and she's tucked into her hay, despite the fact her foal is standing across from her. Which also, just seeing and hearing the foal will stimulate that milk flow as well. Um, I remember it well when I had children, you hear a baby cry and you get the feeling of your milk rushing in. So hopefully this should just be enough to take the edge off for her but as I've mentioned a million times in this video we don't want to take too much off because the idea is we're slowing down the milk flow but it's that fine balance between gradually reducing her milk production and um, and keeping her comfortable so that little milky puddle should be sufficient she looks relaxed and happy good girl and the foal is still calm. I'm going to pop her head colour on now, ready for her to go out in the field, um, which is a big deal. She not only has to have a head colour and need rope on, but she has to walk out of the stable block away from her own mum, who will inevitably call for her as she goes. So it's a big test of her personality in many ways. Um, but if standard perhaps there's anything to go by, good morning lady, um, we shouldn't have a problem. Head colour on, no drama. Okay. Just decided to show you her bum. And that is what you call a well-adjusted young foal who has just settled to life without mum. Really, really nicely. Come on, girls! Come on! Come on! There we go! Good girls! Oh, and she comes to call like a puppy. Come on, then! 
Good girls. There we go. Lovely job. We're now six days into weaning and this is the third full uh, 24 hours that they've spent not having any physical contact and they're in foal. Good morning, Annie. She seems absolutely fine this morning. Good morning, Cassandra. Her standard morning wee to greet me. Very bizarre thing. Um, so yeah, I would say we are officially weaned and it's been a very successful weaning. So because Rosie had a nice soft bag yesterday, we have agreed we will stop milking her now. Um, yeah, look at that, lovely and soft again. Her milk is drying up. So at this point, we let nature take its course and she'll fully dry, but we've got her through the really uncomfortable bit. She loves a chicken scratch. Um, this is the way we wean. We allowed 10 days. Um, in advance of Annie going to her new home on Friday. It's taken six days, um, but we allow that time because every horse is different. Um, it might have been that we'd had to repeat steps one and two for several nights as it happened. Each step's really with her taken 24 hours. Um, we choose to wean this way. I don't think there is officially a right or a wrong way to wean. We just find this the most gentle, humane, stress-free. Um, by, by doing it gradually, we risk um, or reduce the risk of any injury to the foal if it becomes distressed, any injury to the mare if she becomes distressed. Um, uh, I also believe for the future, it doesn't leave you fall with any sort of separation, anxiety, issues. It's it's not been a traumatic experience for the fall at all. Mum has been fractionally more stressed. Um, but the reason she's wandering around her stable now is only because I've not put a hay in yet. If a hay was there, she'd be stood quiet as a lamb. In fact, I will do that now. There we go, hay in. Although I managed to sort of put it all over her. Sorry, Rose, hay in. Horse happy, lots of happy, relaxed horses with no requirement for any separation anxiety. All that's left to do now for us, um, as part of what we always do before the foals leave, we will be worming little Annie before she goes, um, 24 hours before she goes so she can drop anything she might have. We cross graze with sheep here as well, so we we don't tend to have worm issues. We um, fecal egg count all the big horses, but it's just part of our routine before they go, the foals go to a new home. We will worm them, if nothing else, to demonstrate or show the foals how to nicely take a wormer for the future. Because again, we do that in a very stress-free way. No one likes stress. So um, I hope you've enjoyed our little weaning story. And um, that will be our last one for a while now because we're not going to have any more big foals. The next time we do foalings are going to be from the quarter horses. These little dinky numbers. Um, and that might be quite a few years down the line. So we've had 21 years of lovely big foals. Um, and now it's time to focus on riding for a while. Thanks so much for joining me. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. I do try to create some um, content that provides knowledge and guidance for the things that I know about. Thank you. See you soon.